Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the low budget LCS. We are here for some Thursday night games. My name is Les Force, and typically this is the part where I introduce my co host, but these guys are so ready to go that we are actually live into draft right now. Uh, joined with me is Full Metal. How are we doing? We are doing wonderful tonight. These guys are starting off strong, starting draft off before the time even begins. They just want to get on the rift. Indeed, they do. We've got some executive group A action for you tonight. I uh, got beer and snacks on the blue side game one. Coffee house, long time staple of the LBLCS on the red side. And we see Briar and currently a Jarvan hover as our uh, our one, our first two picks here. Uh, you can see in the bands, we got a lot of support prio uh, band away from coffee house and a bit of a mixture of various different things that uh, beer and snacks were looking to take away. Yeah, I mean, seeing the Briar, they're just saying, okay, you know what, let's just, we know Briar's going to look for these long-range ults, we know that Briar's going to look for these picks, if we can just get something to hold Briar in place, and with the Shen to protect whoever the Briar decides to go in on, it's really a protection comp, it seems. Yeah. At least so far. Protection, the blind Shen top, one of those champs that is just super good about, you know, being able to hold down the line top side. When there's a play to be made around the dragon or maybe in the uh the mid lane you can pop that r save the day tp back top and uh, just really impact the map um thresh picked up so there's a bit of a bailout for the briar yeah i mean if if briar goes in and you know you've got you know the the shenel out we have the jarvan clamped on her like briar can just escape you kind of get those all those ults and all those uh utilities burned at least and the, the Cassante as well i mean the Cassante can just immediately take you know the shen or the jarvan out of the fight and he can even use the jarvan's ult as a wall to do that yeah rounding out our first three picks we've got braum picked up as the answer into thresh uh we also had a Cassante, everyone's favorite top laner uh does it all uh, I imagine, I'm not a top laner, but I imagine that's probably a pretty good matchup for uh, for Cassante if he's able to if he's able to time the Shen Taunt correctly with the Unstoppable. I'd imagine it's pretty good on paper. Uh, we see some more bands coming out. Uh, I'd imagine we see a lot of mid lane Priya. We got the Annie, the Oriana, and a little bit of Miram drafts here. We still got AD in mid, so both the carry rolls uh, still on the table for both sides. Yeah, I mean, Beer Snacks does have a decent amount of damage. You know, they have the Briar, they have the Cassante, which can really hurt some people late game with those ults. But right now, Coffee House, I mean, you have the Jarvan, which can go that Bruiser and, like, damage S build. But right now, they have a lot of protection, and they need a lot of damage coming out. So Beer and Snacks, you know, often to ban out this Gragas, often to ban out the Oriana that can really help control the fight. I think Coffee House just really needs to look for consistent damage output here. So it'll be interesting as they see. Interesting. I guess their, their read is that it'd be a Gragas mid. Uh, it's going to be an Ari blind. So something you, you don't see too often here. We're going to see a, a R580 carry uh, in the bot side for, for Coffee House. I believe that is uh, Fate. Yes, Fate in the bot lane getting their choice of counter. And we'll see what the answer is here for Beer and Snacks. Yeah, I mean, you know. Like we see, the, the Briar is a huge pick coming out, uh, Zergi saying in chat. I, I do believe that is, you know, I think Briar is a huge first pick. It kind of lets Beer and Snacks pick these, you know, this Cassante late. It lets them pick this Galio late, you know, pretty much saying, all right, you have this Ari mid. That's like your only damage right now. It really forces Coffee House on a huge AD pick on this last pick. <laughs> Somehow falling it's... all the way to five. We've got Smolder coming out. We've got some scaling going on on beer and snacks, and it's gonna be the vein to pair with it. I love both of these comps. I uh, know that we we had no time to kind of you know preamble before the stream started, talk about things we maybe were looking to see. Uh, before we start talking too much more about draft, I do just want to point out the fact that Popoba, jungler of Coffee House and uh, and fellow streamer, got his R1 Jarvan and essentially said, okay. I've got time to go to the Twitch chat and remind you all that Lachance looks toast. Thank you for your service, Popoba, and we wish you the best of luck on this Jarvan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a powerful pick for the Jarvan to go right up against, you know, this Briar 
Um, I you know, look, just looking at these comps, I mean, Beer and Snacks has really good engage when it comes to either the Briar all-in, the Thresh hook into a follow-up with the Cassante. You know, and if Briar goes in, she has so much follow-up with Galio. You know, she has the she has the ability to escape with the Thresh, and then Smolder can kind of just free hit from from afar, while Cassante kind of just plays like a little bit of defense, a little bit of damage in the middle of the fight. I mean, Coffee House's real thing is just protect this Ari, protect this Vein, and maybe look for an engage onto Smolder if you know if they go out too far. But it's really going to be coffee. It's going to be up to Coffee House to really try and pick out when they want to go in and who they need to protect in these fights. Yeah, I think uh, I think Mew Life putting it pretty well into the uh, into the chat here. I, I feel like both these comps do very similar things. I think you've got the front line coming out of your you know top lane. You've got a uh, slightly different front line in terms of the Jarvan versus the Galio, but then you have a carry to round out kind of that top side. And in the bot lane, it's all about these, you know, late game hyper carries. You know, can you peel for the vein? Can you get Smolder to those stacks? There's a lot of good execute targets on Coffee House, and it's always just that question of, you know, can you get to the the 225 stacks on the Smolder? A lot of pressure, I think, for uh, <laughs> good Gurp Jafig Fig. Almost certainly not how we pronounce it. It will. I, be I, I, don't, I think it's Gunga Fig Fig. I don't. Will it, it baffles seven me. Seven different ways to stream, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and all of them will be wrong. But we say it with love. Um, I'm excited to see how this one plays out. I just realized there is an R. There is. It is a G U R. So yeah, it'll be. It'll definitely be interesting. Um, I think realistically, I would love to see you know these Balins trying to get as much as they can out of these fights. You know, I don't really expect the Cassante and Shen to fight too much. I think it's mostly going to be Shen playing it back, you know, using those Q shields to kind of just like survive the Cassante pokes. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, if this Vayne Braum tries to force something early onto the Smolder and really put Smolder behind where Smolder is weakest. You know, if they if they kind of just leave this bot lane to be this standalone farming lane, I think that's where Smolder thrives the most and where you need to really look at making things happen. Yeah, I think I agree. I think it's going to be a slower early game. I think it's going to be a lot of pressure on uh, Popova, on the Jarvan. If there are going to be plays to be made early, I think it's going to be on the back of the Jarvan. I mean, you can certainly look to make plays with the Ari. Maybe not on the Galio necessarily, but, you know, Briar, certainly a champ that can get caught out. Uh, maybe look to make plays on the Smolder, who does have that kind of weaker early game. Uh, predictions are live, by the way. We see if there's a lot of schmeckles to be made if you bet on beer and snacks here as we got about four two and a half minutes left on that prediction as we are entering the spectator delay and uh full metal i think you had an idea of something you wanted to uh to do while we load into spectator delay here i would love to if you can switch on our screen over uh we put together a lovely tier list so we we've got one that we can start with which is going to be our coffee drinks Important so to mention, big big beverage series here today we've got beer on one side coffee on the other and uh chat it's also important to mention so we're gonna we're gonna do some tier rankings of coffee drinks here but i personally do not drink coffee at all so you guys will be my votes so full metal is gonna lead us off avid coffee drinker but then i need you guys to help fill me in here we're gonna kill a couple minutes here so lead us off full metal so I'm just going to go in order. Also, before I forget, Dr. New, uh, Nodnarb, uh, I know you say our volumes are a bit different, so just let us know who needs to be quieter or louder so we can change that. But going through this tier list, we're going to start off with black. Now, me personally, I know a lot of people that drink black. I personally can't do it. It's no sugar. It's no milk. It's just pure coffee beans. I think it deserves like a D, maybe a C, because it's got a place. It's just not really... For everyone, it's not an all-rounder. It's kind of like a, you know, you need it sometimes. So I'll, I'll put it as a C. Um, also, Dr. Uh, Navnar, just to answer you, uh, this is Full Metal speaking, and Last Force is the lovely host here. So continuing, Latte. I think lattes are excellent. I think lattes are a beautiful, like, sit-down drink. You can get a latte when you're going to, like, a breakfast place. Um, they're not so much your everyday, I'm going to have it at home. So I'm gonna almost put it as like a C, maybe a beer, uh, B, maybe a B, just because of how good they are. Um, 
Following that, I think cappuccinos kind of fit into that same category of like, you know, you go to a coffee shop. It's like when you want to sit down and relax and enjoy these drinks, you know. Now, on the on the opposite side of the Americanos, personally, I'm not a big fan. Um, I've never even met someone who would ever choose an Americano. So I personally put it more as like a D, maybe an E. But OK, I'm much louder. Thank you very much. So personally, I'm going to put Americano as a D. If you guys disagree, please let me know. Um, and just keep going because I'm going to hammer off the, the last few. Espressos, easy. B tier, maybe even A tier. Macchiatos, for me, A tier every day. Mochas, you can get them at Wawa. You can get them across the corner. Lee's B tier, maybe an A tier. Um, Irish, it's got alcohol in it. That's got to be at least C tier, maybe B tier. But with that, we do have more for later, but I believe the game is starting up. Yep, we are quickly loading into the match these guys super prompt on the money here we should be loading into the client now uh didn't even really have time to check out the skin game but i did see one of the best skins in this game top five for sure in birdio uh band camp already has my vote for player of the series and i think i'm gonna have to go with uh, beer and snacks get the win as a result yeah also just to clarify i'm at 25 seconds now let me know right. if I need to move. Go ahead and pause at 30, 35. We'll do 35. Welcome okay. To All right, I am at 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Perfect. Should be on the same page here. See just very standard kind of just, you know, defensive posturing. Just making sure that you see any invades that may be getting snuck up here. Um, a little bit of interesting movement here from, uh, from Draken on the... Uh, on the Thresh, they actually came top to potentially look for something with the Briar if Jarvan was invading, but soon we're just going to get a good old standoff here. Yeah, I mean, I like what I see just, you know, from uh, the side of Coffee. You know, Popova looking a little... Drake actually going to hit the hook on Popova. Is going to take a lot of damage? Galio trying to come over 2v4. I think you got to walk this off if you are Coffee House. And indeed, just going to be some trading of damage for these junglers. Meanwhile, the bot side... Maybe gonna look and put pressure, but uh, but Gurf just going to walk this out, drop the ward, take an auto for their trouble. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say, I liked what they were doing. You know, they have Popova looking for the flag. Sadly, the are better yet for, for Draken. Looking for that thresh hook kind of forces them to back off and even get a decent chunk out of the Jarvan. Um, so, I mean, good luck on them. And thankfully, you know, the Jarvan does get to start top a little hurt. But he does get to do that red buff, so he gets a little bit of health back. Uh, and hopefully that should kind of round things off for a bit. You know, help Popova, you know, get his clear going, get some farms in him. Uh, my eyes are going to be on this bot lane. I, I want to see, you know, Fate, and I want to see Triple Net looking for these plays. Obviously, they have to deal with the poke constantly from the Smolder W, especially with the Smolder, you know, the smaller did go Dorn's Blade, which I believe is becoming the new item to start off with. I do believe there's a, a patch or two where Smolder did go Dorn's Ring. But it's interesting to see Smolder going back to that Dorn's Blade just for the lifesteal, just for the sustain and lane. So, be interesting to see what happens down there. Everyone's still finding out the new champs. Uh, I do like Triple Net, been on point with these Qs on the Braum. Uh, Jarvan was spotted out there by that ward up near the Raptors, uh, so Isro knows that they are pathing uh, the same way as Jarvan. We do not know if Jarvan knows that they're on the same side as Briar. Uh, looks like we're just going to see Jarvan actually skip over at camp. Maybe they're going to look to make a play somewhere. And again, just the, the Braum cues, just, uh, just getting hit time after time. Yeah, I mean, oh, we do see Briar looking mid lane. Maybe something onto the Ari who is forced up the river, so nothing for the for Zara to find with the Ari, a little a little pushed out, and does allow Briar to, to hop over that wall and immediately go for the red buff. Ooh, the Charm so... actually gonna hit, Ignite gets popped onto Bandcamp, gonna have to walk this one out, he actually has to flash out! Both flash down for Ignite, Galleon is probably gonna have to look to TP, meanwhile on the top side gonna be a good amount of trading, Kasante just looking to uh, get some procs off, doesn't to see too much more up here. Yeah, I mean, it, could, it puts Azara in a position where Azara kind of can't go bot lane now and, and kind of almost needs to answer mid a little bit. You get the, the TP from, from Galio, but now Azara gets to just hold this wave for him, which I'm sure Bandcamp is is, is loving his jungler for this at the moment. 
but it does allow for Popa to start looking for this bot lane and potentially look for a play onto the Smolder's Rush. There's a lot of trading actually here on the top side. Both these top lanes are getting pretty low. Dark Chocobo Mage gonna have to maybe run him down. Do they have the taunt? There's actually the flash in. Dark Chocobo Mage going for the all in onto the Xante. The flash doesn't matter. That's first blood over to the Shen. Coffee House. Hook coming in. Drake actually gonna try to get Popova under the tower, but good push away there from Fate. Keeps Popova safe. I don't think that uh, Beer and Snacks have much more to uh, follow up on here, but that's first blood over Coffee House. Yeah, and I mean, good look from Popova at the same time for bot lane. You know, it'd be, you know, right as the everyone is kind of looking at the top side, Popova's trying to make something happen and pressure this bot lane. It was a beautiful uh, play from the Thresh, so no sums are wasted on the side uh, for Smolder and Thresh, but it is a ghost out of fate. So now the Smolder and Thresh do have this summer advantage, but Smolder's running a little low on mana. So I'd be curious to see, you know, how long does this Vayne want to try and stay before it's potential disaster for this incoming Briar. Yeah, early lead here for Coffee House. We're going to see, uh, of course, with the new season, uh, the, the contests of Grubs has always been uh, a huge focal point. Although it sounds, it seems like nowadays people are starting to just remember the fact that there are early dragons, so there's not as much Pryo. On early grubs, we do see Jarvan on that top side. Does get spotted out by a ward. Uh, Briar's on the other side, though, so it looks like Jarvan's... They're, they're contemplating starting up these early grubs. Yeah, I definitely agree. Also, to answer chat for Grosso MJ, if I'm saying your name right, in this in this game, for the for which champ is a latte, I'd almost go with the Ari. You know, she's she's got a lot of... Uh, she got the white tail, which is more like the milk. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put my vote on the on the Ari for the latte for this game. You heard it here first. Ari is latte. We see Jarvan on those grubs, and we see the, the the trade that has become the standard. One team gets first dragon, one team gets first set of grubs, and it really comes down to kind of what you do in the next set of objectives to determine you know where this game's gonna go. Because you know yeah, one, we... one set of grubs not gonna determine. How the game's gonna go one dragon not really a win con but it's when you get that two dragons or you get the six grubs that's where you really start to see the uh the game play out yeah i mean this is all three gr uh grubs going for the side of of you know of this red side so i mean realistically this is going to be a lot of push pressure that could eventually go into this ari and this shen with the flash in so... from ari with the r actually gonna do as much damage on a bank as i can the dash is the taunt trying to buy themselves some time and Galio actually going to be able to walk that one out. No teleport though, so Ari is going to be able to crash this wave. Oh, oh Majora's looking actually for a flag. Oh, a little high, but he does see him. Oh, the they were so the close kill. to we're going to flash in, get the kill. Trying to reset under your tower. That is not a safe spot against Jarvan and heads up play there from Kokoba. Right place at the right time. Yeah, beautiful look going straight down, you know, oh, into this jungle knowing the Briar was there. You know, knowing Briar was at the dragon, knowing he's kind of clear to kind of just look through this jungle. And beautiful look. Uh, Briar does come up, but I don't know if it's in time to stop the Jarvan from taking this blue buff. I like the Choco Mage having a really good time here on the top side. Uh, Kastansi is actually trying to arm under the tower, gets a tower shot, but that actually the taunt going to come through from Dark Choco Mage. That should be another kill over to the Shen. 2 and 0, oh, 2 solo kills, but Izero is looking to clean up. But they don't have the six. They're down two levels. I think they've reconsidered and are just going to go for that skullcrab instead. But then on the bot side, that's going to be a massive hook onto the, the vein. The lance are trying to come through to protect the smolder. But look at the stand united coming through from on dark choco mage. Going to have to flash away is the thresh. The, the knock up into the wall that's flashed down on the smolder. But meanwhile, the thresh hook back into the tower. Dark choco mage doesn't have flash. And those towers oh, are going to kill him, I believe. The shield may be not enough. Shut down over to the smolder. Yeah, and I mean, beautiful stuff from Gafigafig with the cleanse, just saving them, making it easy for them to walk away. They barely, you know, are away from the wall enough to not get TC'd again by the vein from the Condemn. I mean, and then the, the hooks and the flays from Drake and secure the kill, and it forces Shen, you know, the death, and now Shen has to go right back up top. Those are some massive plays there by Thresh in particular bot side. Uh, ultimately, Shen did use that advantage we were talking about. You know, they made the TP play and were able to, you know, TP top right after the fact. But just uh, just heads up from Beer and Snacks. They get the kill. Taunt going to come up just a little short. Ari's had a lot of pressure here in this mid lane, though. Already got two plates pretty much on their own. That's uh, that's going to accelerate them here as uh, we see the next grubs are going to be coming up here in about a minute and a half or so. 
Yeah, I mean, talking about... Ooh, good charm as well. Talking about our, our Latte Ari here, I mean, they're running the Dark. They're running the Dark Seal, so they're looking for these, like... They, they want these plays. They want the plays either on the galley on the mid lane, or they're going to be looking to roam more than likely towards this bot side. The only concern is that Smolder did get the shutdown on the Shen, so that was an early Sheen into a call field for the, for the Smolder here. So, Charm not the Smolder's hit up on the tower. Does Galley have the damage to That's actually just a massive taunt under the tower. Oh. And kicking it up is the Briar. Scoops up the kill, taunt under tower, and good, good W there from Cassante. Gonna be able to trade as effectively as they can. Yeah, I mean, beautiful stuff from Bandcam to stop that Ori from executing and buying just enough time for Sar to come in with, you know, with the over the wall kind of dash that you get to have and kind of come in and, and secure the kill before Calio dies from potentially a W or even the Ignite. But good play and good heads up on Asar to come in and help Galio out, help Bandcamp survive that. And I mean, right now they're they're equaling, you know, they're still a little bit behind the gold. But I think with the momentum and the tempo they're setting in the last few minutes, they're gonna start looking for these void grubs. Yeah, we see Thresh is roamed up. We see Smolder just trying to stay by their tower. Spear and Snatch are not willing to give up six grubs. And while Dragon is still on the respawn for another minute, they're going to try and just secure this objective with no answer from Coffee House. But we do see the Ari just pushing this mid lane, potentially going to get another one or two plates. Already down to uh, already down to two here. Maybe going to get another one before Galio shows up. Yeah, I be I believe they saw them going up with the with the little ward we have in the in the top of river there. So I believe they saw them going for, you know, those points and said, you know what, we don't need the six. You know, we're not a super heavy split comp, comp team, you know, unless you consider the Shen. So they're like, okay, let's just give that away. But we do see the Shen looking now, maybe for something. A bit of trouble here. Gisante gonna pop the Q and just good, good respectful flash there. Uh, you don't have a team on this side of the map. You're potentially dead there if you don't flash. So save your life. Collect this farm as Coffee House is setting up for this dragon. Yeah, I mean Coffee House is just like, alright, we gave him the void, but look how much vision control we have over their over their bot jungle now. So Coffee House is just kinda able to take this for free. I mean, if if Beers and Sacks wants to look for Dragon, they're gonna have to do it blind, so otherwise they're just forced to kinda give this one up. And, you know, it, it, it does kind of even out the early game, you know, each team got three void grubs, each team got one dragon. So now it's kind of coming to a point where, okay, you know, where do we go from here? Do we, do we try and get the smolder to stack up? Do we try and get, you know, things going for, for the briar here? Or do we just kind of play this low and let it scale? Good taunt there, gonna walk this out with the aftershock. I think Oh Briar trying to hit that R, not quite able to hit it on the blue card hype. Isra maybe looking to jump over, but Popoba is in the vicinity. Dangerous spot to be. Briar actually W in over there on the other side. Galley's gonna look to ult in, but good EQ there from Popoba. Get yourself out of dodge. And that's an ultimate down. Yeah, I mean that that's a lot out. That's that's essentially two as well, because Briar's ult's gone as well. So now you kind of have, you Bandcamp's know, you have all your ulties. Are you going to have to go away? Flash in from Bandcamp. Stand United coming through on the top. And that's a massive Jarvan R under two people. Shen coming in, but actually got stopped on the reset by Cassante And Isro is getting so low there on the backside. Flash in from Blue Card. Oh, and that's going to be a kill over to Coffee House. Oh, does, the minion. Does Galio have anything left in the tank? I don't think so. One for nothing there. A lot of ults burn. Heads up there from Cassante to stop that uh, the Shen TP, but cannot stop the Shen shield. Yeah, I mean, still beautiful stuff from them to, to to continue that fight. Beautiful flash for the kill from Blue Card Hype. It's a little unfortunate that the charm came out right in front of the minion that just decided, hey, I want to get hit instead. Um, but still, they got the kill. They were able to get the takedown. And now with that, you know, they get the Ari. The Ari now has Malignance. The Ari now has Sorcerer Shoes. And the Ari's got two Dark Seal. So it may not have a bounty, but that Ari is dangerous. I mean, at the same time, you know, you have this vein just constantly pushing, you know, fade, not, no, not a lot of kills, but a lot of gold lead over this molder has the bounty for 150 gold. And now we're at the point where, okay, now Rift is coming up. Do, you know, do they want to move this vein? Do they want to move fade up? Maybe match it with the RH to secure this Rift? Or we just kind of, kind of leave all the lanes lives, leave the Shen top to protect this. The RH did crack the mid turret, you know, fast. I think that was like a 12 minute, 
uh, tier 1 turret. So it's going to be interesting to see how much blue card hype can move around the map. So, but we do have this aura looking behind the aura, looking behind, looks like she's going in. Yeah, blue card hype in a lot of trouble here in the mid lane. Isra and Bandcamp both doing as much damage as they can. The Briar Arc is going to hit, and I think the Ari is going to go down here on the backside. That is a kill. Aethus Briar, two kills now in their favor. This trading top side just seems to go incessantly. So yeah, um, I, I think... It's, it's interesting that, you know, not the highest kill count game, you know, pretty even in terms of the kills, but already about a 3,000 gold difference. A lot of that due to this Ari, just, they got that solo turret, they got so many plates from it, they're applying so much pressure as Smolder gonna try and <laughs> defend this pink board. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a bigger gold lead than maybe you'd think on the surface. Uh, Fate, it did. Go in there, get oh, it. Oh, massive trouble here. We're all gonna try and pop the R as best they can, but massive either. Brom trying to flash away, but Briar again, right spot, right time, goes to three and one. Yeah, I mean, Grafig, you know, wanted the double kill, saw the beautiful angle at Mom, you know, triple net, you know, the beautiful E to stop, to stop that entire ultimate, but sadly not enough to stop the Briar from running at your face. Um, good stuff on Azaro, you know, trying to make, you know, their lead to happen around the map, not just in mid lane on Azaro, but onto, you know, the spot lane as well, trying to look for the vein. You know, we'll take the Brom if they get it. Galley got a bit of trouble here. Good Cataclysm there from Popova. The charm after the fact. Blue card hype and Popova doing so much damage here. Triple Knight is coming in, but they don't even get there in time. Another kill over to the Ari, and we see Shen has started up the Rift Herald with Popova making their way up. Yeah, I mean, with with that pick, with Galio taken off the map, it kind of does allow them to just, you know, get this prio on this Rift Herald, you know, let the Vayne back, let the Vayne get their item, you know, this Vayne now now has the Blade of the Rune King. So this going to be huge fight pressure going in the way for this next dragon. And right now, you know, we have the R, we have the Braum kind of just setting up vision, you know, stopping them from fighting for this Rift. I think they're just going to be able to use this Rift pressure to, you know, potentially scare them off, say, hey, listen, if you fight us a dragon, we can take your tier 2 mid. That quick check on the smolder. We are at 120 stacks, and you know the 225 is that is that threshold where they really got to be. Uh, if you are inside of here in snacks, that's what you're trying to get to. Um, not not a bad pace, but you are coming up on the third drag, and you want to be able to contest. You know potentially like a soul. Uh, we're assuming that this next drag should go the way of coffee house. Uh, what are you looking to do right now if you are uh, beer and snacks? Are you looking to fight? Are you looking to? trying to play on the other side like what kind of what are you what are you thinking right now i, I mean so what this this, this molder is about to get their their second upgrade on the one they have their 125 upgrade so you can you can look for a fight right now i think the goal is to to look for this vein that's a little lonesome right now so they're pushing up vision i mean i don't know if they notice that the vein is alone they might be able to just go down but i think the idea is just to force you know a member from coffee house off the map Cassante has actually come down already. That's the standard United coming in onto the Ari. Meanwhile, Fate just got completely zoned off. And that's going to kill a bit of Smolder. Look at all his damage coming through in the mid lane, though. It's the Briar roll is going to connect. Isro coming in is doing as much damage as he can, but there is such low health bar. Blue going to pick up another kill. Isro is stuck between a rock and a hard place. That's going to be a double kill over to the Ari. Dark Chug made so low. Triple kill to the Ari. And all that is left is Smolder. They are on the wrong side of the rift. This looks like it's going to be a quadra kill over to Blue Card Height. I, it looks good when they when they got the uh, the vein solo, but then it just turned. I mean, the 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 vein is important to to look at, sure. But this Ari with the malignants now it's got the hunting guys, and now ten stacks on this dark seal. It's it's a force to be reckoned with, and and blue card hype is making this latte work. Yes, the, this, this latte going really well here. Ari now six and two. They've got the fully stacked uh, the ring. Looks like they're probably going to take a trip to the library on their next reset. Uh, I like the aggression here. You know, they they recognize that they're kind of one of the, the main damage threats. And so they're, they're going balls to the wall. You know, they're going to the dark seal. They're trying to get that increased damage. Rift actually not going to crash in time. We'll see if they stick around. Looks like they're going to play this one safe and not jeopardize uh, giving up kills here. Ooh, yeah, I'm actually going to crash. Oh, it might get a charge. Sadly, the, the the hook does not stop it, but it does bring you closer to it once it leaves you. Once it once it leaves you for the turret. Um. Also, uh, X1 Skyline. I cannot give you Smeckles myself, but I'm I'm sure that uh, Less Force here would love to give you a compliment. Uh. So so the thing with Skyline is he just he just kind of shows up. Um. 
You know, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, It's Always Sunny. Kind of, oh, actually, good. Good W. They're actually going to R the Shen under the tower. They want to do as much damage as they can. I don't believe the W is up for the Shen, but it's just such a low health bar. Doing as much damage as he can with these Qs. He's actually dash back in, trying to do as much damage as by time for Israel. Actually going to knock him back in, and Israel going to flash in, and that's going to be a kill over to the Kasante. Meanwhile, on the bot side, they're going all in for this Ari, but look at that damage coming through. The flash away from the Ari. Smolder, these helpers are so low, and the kill's actually going to go over to Blue Card Hype, and I, that's going to be a double kill. Resh doesn't have anything left. So close there. Smolder flashing away, trying to get hit the R. This it R is immense. Was... I blue card hype immense that flash flashed right over Mon that could have spilled disaster just changed that fight entirely made the one v two happen you know top side the 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 fight with Shen and Kazante I mean Dark Toko Mage Tar Toko Bow Mage nearly had the one v one uh Popova nearly there but just not close enough in time Azaro gets the kill but thankfully Popova was able to get out and on the other side of the map I mean. Blue card hype is a force to be reckoned with. Has gone to the library and now has 18 stacks on this Magi Souls here. This is a dangerous latte. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Izero a lot. I feel like they have been in the right place at the right time. They're picking up the kills because they're kind of the, you know, Smolder's like your late game insurance. You know, Briar's kind of your, your mid game insurance. And I feel like Briar has been doing everything in their power to kind of make those plays happen. It's just like right now, Ari is so tough. And you gotta just find ways to get on him. I don't know if it's gonna be a Briar R into setting up the Galio follow through. Uh, you might just have to shoot in the dark if you're Izero. Uh, Cause that is a massive shutdown. You get that into the Briar, get that onto the Smolder, and it's Cataclysm gonna come through. Ari is here as well. So much damage onto the Cassandra. He's gonna flash away if possible. The bomb is coming through. The R actually gonna get canceled there, and that's legendary status for Blue Card Hype. Baron is up. I don't know if they're gonna look to do it. They do have. Thing. They have Braum. Looks a little risky though. Yeah. Oh, maybe with the the we do find the the Braum here, but uh, it is not a lonely Braum. Fate yeah, is there and looking to go in. Pop the ghost. Braum are coming through. Good hook there from Thresh. Thresh not getting walk water. Looking to get the R off. Get the mob, but it is blocked by. Triple net, Art is gonna hit for Isro onto the triple net, but look at the Shen Art coming through. Can they burst through him in time? No, they cannot. Shen with a massive taunt, massive shield. That is gonna be a kill onto the Briar. Fate picking up the kill. Bandcamp running for the hills. There's a lot of low health bars, but nothing left. They're just gonna walk this off, and it looks like they're gonna walk away from the Baron. Actually, they're gonna they're gonna walk up. It looks like they're gonna try and start this. Triple net is yeah. low though. Triple net is low. Fate about half HP does have the Bork, but it's not really enough. And this is a territorial Baron, so this Baron will do damage to you if you try and hurt it. So, Fate taking a little bit of damage. Triple Net is, is a little too low to stay. Oh, but look at Blue Card Hype trying hype to make stuff happen. And Smolder got caught. Blue Card Hype popping the R. This Cassante is tanky, but not tanky enough to deal with these Magi stacks. Full stacks are actually going to go and try and get a kill. Wrong. Able to survive with the W. And Blue Card Hype does oh. not care. They are diving into the Galley, diving into the Thresh. Charm not gonna hit, but look at all the damage. The flash glad it kills him. That's gonna be a double kill over to Blue Card Hype. Blue Card Hype knows Blue their Card damage. Is still not done. They're going over the wall again. That's another triple kill. Cataclysm go or EQ Could be gonna Quadra. rock is Izero. Ooh, oh, over the wall though. Good charm. Gonna hit. They're gonna run as they can. Oh, the Q. Another Quadra <laughs> kill over to this Ari. Absolute madness. Listen, it's gonna be a big payday on the jersey. Yeah, I mean, listen. If you know you can do the damage and you know you can burn them, you might as well go in. I mean, this isn't just a 25 stacked Magi's. This is a this is a Malignans, this is a Leandres, and this is Ravnon's death cap. Only 22 minutes into this game, this already is nearly full built, only one item off, and is looking for those kills. It looks like Fate a little, a little caught out. Good gets hit by the They're actually gonna knock the vein into the smolder. Are they gonna try and get this kill over to him? But the flash away actually cleansed. Smolder is looking very efficient. But again, this Braum E so massive every time. Galio looking to go in with the massive R. They're gonna knock him out of people with the taunt. Briar's coming in, but straight into the Shen. Dark Choco Mage running away. Dark Choco Mage gonna get the taunt in on the smolder. That's gonna be a kill over to the Shen. Izero so low there. Massive oh. E actually pushes away forward, but it's not enough to get away. <laughs> from the the merchant that is blue card hype another four kills fate just doing the dragon and this baron push is going to continue oh man who knew mom's worst nightmare was a giant door
I mean, it, it almost it, it's a beautiful place from Triple Net to just hold this hold the shield, you know, say I'm not gonna use my, my E unless I see mom. And the second I hear Smolder screaming for her, I'm I'm putting this wall up. Yeah, very very unsung hero, I think, in this game. You know, you're gonna look and you're gonna see the 17 kills on the Ari. You're gonna see the you know 1017 from the Jarvis, who I think has played super well. But really the the smolder has just been negated so effectively by triple net on this bronze. So many artists have been blocked, so many kill threats. Like right there, they were looking to get the kill. They got the pick on the bait, and it just wasn't enough to deal with this Braum. Izaro has to just stand by, watch their camps get taken. It is it is good to know though. I do believe, you know, we are at 236 stacks. So, you know, the smolder, although mom hasn't really played much this match. Smolder is about to do a lot of damage if if let lived through through these fights. So as much of a lead as you know as Coffee House does have, especially on this Ari, if this Smolder is allowed to just free hit, this they can still close down. They're popping yard, they're trying to do as much damage as they can. Blue card hype got relatively low. Kasante getting low. They pop the yard, and that's actually sucks low. Hell and look at how low these guys are. That's gonna be a massive shutdown over to the Smolder. That's a double kill on Smolder. Israel going in on the backside, and that's gonna be four kills overall. Oh, Smolder just doesn't care. They get the triple kill. And meanwhile, on the bot side, it's just Galio versus the Shen. Shen is winning this matchup, and that's going to be an ace for Coffee House. Yeah, I mean, but look at it though. That that is nearly a that is what like a 13k gold lead on the side of Coffee House, and still is a hard fight for them to win. I mean, just goes to show how much damage this late game tower can do. But sadly, it just is not in time, as I believe this is the two Nexus turrets going down, and maybe the Nexus as well. Thresh here to stop them, can maybe hold them off for Briar to come in, but this is just Pavova just gonna keep hitting it with, with his spear, just maybe looks for a fly over just in case, but it looks like this will be the game taken by Coffee House. Yeah, Pavova was not interested in keeping this game going. Quick and very nice 1-0 victory for Coffee House. Now we'll see, as we pop up the damage right here and just look at that Ari damage. I'm gonna put it up on the on the stream here. Just such a threat. Forty one thousand yeah. damage. Just absolutely popped off. Yeah, I mean, just to put things into pers perspective, I mean, what the next closest person in terms of just items, you know, finished, maybe the Smolder with with the Spear Sojin and Essence Reaver, but this is a this is a Ari, you know, only you know a few components off from from a full build here so just crazy damage from blue card here and beautiful plays as well i mean really pushing you know yeah you picked the galio but what's that going to do against an ari with 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 so much stacks and so much damage with malignance yeah that so beautiful stuff being able to pressure that first tower they just got so much gold and then just that that one fight by the dragon where they're able to pick up a quadra kill i think really just kind of fully accelerated blue card hype to be that carry threat that massive problem that they ended up being as we are getting invited into the next lobby and we'll see if we are it looks like we are sticking on the same sides here yeah i mean it they just they're saying you know what yeah you guys took game one but we are so comfortable on this side and we believe that we can still make things happen which kudos to them. I, I, I always love staying on the same side, even if you lose, because you know what? You did spend a game there, and yeah, they they have the advantage of also, you know, oh, we just won on this side, maybe we can just run it back. But you're also practice on that side. You're saying, okay, this is what we did wrong, this is what we did right. This is where we can go from here, and hopefully make this a wonderful series. Yeah, if you're the side of Beer and Snacks, you got to pick your side here, and they stuck with the blue side. What? What are you looking to change? Are you, do you feel like there's a pick that they need to take away from Coffee House from that game? Do you feel like it was something where it was just kind of more of a, like, we, we've had a good draft, we just made a couple mishaps, and that allowed Coffee House to win the game? What, what is your kind of read as we wait for this draft to start, if you're the side of Beer and Snacks? I think it comes down to is that this patch, especially, has a lot of of volatile picks got a lot of first you know first round picks you can kind of attack and go for you know they picked the the briar and look how great the briar did early game. if if they've got more picks up their sleeve 
that they're saying, hey, we're practice on this, and we have a comp that can that can round about it. Yeah, there's some there's some fights that should have happened that maybe let the RE get so far ahead. You know, if we had a little more time, that smolder could have really popped off. You know, I trust that Beard and Snacks, if they've got these pocket picks that they can pull out and make something happen with, Blue Side is the side to do it on. Yeah, absolutely. Look, like I will go ahead and pay out our Schmeckle, Schmeckle predictions here. I uh, didn't actually quite catch a, yeah, a lot of, a lot of bets went in on Coffee House and Popoba going to make a little bit of a, a little bit of side cash here as Coffee House was able to pick up game number one. We will pay this out. Don't show me this message again. And we will get started with game two draft as soon as these guys are ready. Uh, looks like coffee house is ready we will and it looks like beer and snacks are ready as well so we should be starting just about any moment here yeah i mean is there anything that you think that that coffee house is just on their saying on their side saying listen we we, we hope this isn't banned we hope we can rerun it back for game two i think i i mean the the re i think would be you know the easy answer but but really i think the shen did have a lot of impact was able to kind of win that 1v1 on the top side on their own had some massive shen r's even if a couple of them were interrupted by Cassante, you know the shield still came through can't negate that uh same bands so far i believe for beer and snacks i believe it was the vi it was the twist of fate yeah um, don't want to listen if if blue card hype is not much of an R, what is blue card hype gonna do with some blue cards so don't want to let that TF go through. I think I've actually heard that they don't like Twisted Fate. I don't know if that's just a, it was a bad rumor from uh, the rumor mill, but I, someone had told me that they don't love um, playing Twisted Fate. And there is the Shen ban. So kind of what I was thinking, just the, the Shen R, the Shen shields were a massive kind of that early to mid game threat. And we're going to see Isro back on the Briar, which they played really well on game one, I think. Yeah, I mean, they, they knew when to look mid. To try and help this Galio kind of stabilize that as much as possible. They went bot to try and make plays. And they were able to secure the first dragon. You know, and even try and make plays. And then eventually get the, the second three uh, three set of the Void Grubs as well. To kind of stabilize that as well. Um, and they showed that they liked it. And they enjoyed it early game. Late game became a little tough for Briar to go in. But I'd still love to see them, you know, have this early game pressure. And have these early game abilities to, to really go in and, and make these fights happen. Um, and it looks like Popoba looking at that Jarvan. So looks like, you know, Popoba just saying, hey, you know, we want to start this draft off the same. We'll start it the same. I mean, you're curious to see if we see an Ori and we don't. We see the Oriana coming out this time. Oriana was uh, taken away on the second phase of bands last time by Beer and Snacks. This time, Coffeehouse going to scoop it up early. Great synergy with the Jarvan. And we saw Popoba play while not a... Uh, not a like superstar pop off type of Jarvan performance. They played a really consistent. They were doing the things they need to do. They secured the objectives and had some really good EQ cataclysms. So this is a really good pairing. We see the Thresh coming back out for beer and snacks. We did see some good plays out of uh, out yeah. of breaking on the Thresh. I'm I'm thinking of that one play bot where they uh, they hooked the Shen back into tower in particular. Yeah, I mean, Draken did a phenomenal job as Thresh, you know, trying to, to stabilize bot lane, giving Smolder the avenue to get so many stacks. I mean, 22 minutes with with full with full passive is, is still a feat to, to, you know, not forget. And, you know, both that's that's on uh, that's on Gurfafig, you know, being able to get these stacks and, you know, along with Drake uh, Draken on this Thresh making that happen. But it looks like we're going to get a Vigar. Now, is that going to be a Vigar mid against the Orianna, or do we think that could be a Vigar uh, APC, if you will? I think it's definitely a flex. I, I would imagine that that pairs pretty well with the Briar. In, in my mind, you know, you, you trap him in the cage and you you let the uh, the frenzied uh, vampire kind of go on the loose, right? We yeah. could go bot lane, but you do see that it is in the Orianna. Um, Renekton actually picked up by Dark Chocobo Mage, who I believe is a Renekton aficionado. I think that that is their most played uh, top laner. So gonna have to have a good answer if you are beer and snacks renekton one of those really strong early game champs gives a lot of pressure for grubs has the uh, the good push and jarvin should be looking topside here yeah i'd be curious do we think coffee house is gonna offer support and give their adc another you know last pick or do you think they're gonna like force an adc pick here to maybe see where they need the utility the most i think right now you see you have the thresh 
and I, I typically think that support counter pick matters a little bit more than ADC counter pick, but kind of in this spot, you're in a you potentially get both. Um, you could look, you have a lot of engage coming from the Renekton, Jarvan, and the Orianna, so you can look to either help index into that, you know, pick some engage of your own from the bot side, maybe like a Rakan, or you could look to maybe play more of a uh, sit back and peel enchanter type to protect this Orianna to protect potentially your AD carry, which is actually going to be the smolder. So they're going to take that away from fear and snacks. Yeah. I mean, the thing with the smolder is that we did see the Doran Strength Star, you know, this previous game, but smolder can run AP, especially with the, the ability power scaling with the W. So it kind of also helps with Orianna not being the only AP damage with smolder, a little bit of mix in the beginning, if you will. Uh, it does look like we will get a Mordekaiser against this Renekton. I mean, listen, if you go all in with the ball and the ball goes off and you're no, new, you're no longer there, I mean, it, it kind of sucks for Jarvan. If if Jarvan just ults the, you know, ults someone and then Jarvan's no longer there or, you know, Smolder's taken out of the fight when when they go all in, it could be interesting to see how this goes. It looks like it's going to be Senna with it as well. So I'm taking a look at this. It looks like it's going to be a Senna Thresh. Senna escaped Thresh once, but wants to go back in lane with him. Yeah, I... In a former lifetime, I was a Renekton main in the top lane, and though it has been several years since that, I feel like I remember the Mordekaiser matchup being a challenge. Um, just with the W, you're able to kind of sustain a lot of that that bursty trade damage that Renekton likes to do. As we see the Melio pairing with Smolder, um, I, I I think that that is a good matchup for um, for the Mordekaiser into Dark Chocobo Mage. And, and it looks like it's going to be uh, farming Senna, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be the Senna ADC with the, with the Thresh. We're going to have the Mordekaiser top, the Vigar mid against the Orianna. I mean, when I look at this, when I look at this Beard and Snacks comp, I see, okay, Thresh cage, Vigar cage. Briar goes in, and then Senna gets a free hit. And then if anyone goes on to the Senna or the Vigar, the Mordekaiser just says, nope, you're fighting me instead. So they have a decent, you know, comp of, of trying to just trap them in and maybe get a, a decent pickoff. I mean, if you late game, if you need to start tanking and stuff and Thresh needs to tank or Mordekaiser needs to tank, you have the Senna to keep things alive. The only thing to worry is that who's stronger in stacking? Is it going to be the Smolder or is it going to be the Senna? Is Senna going to be able to do, you know, this massive range damage before Smolder is able to just execute everyone? Um, it is good to know that the Senna was hurt a little bit in this patch. Um, just a little bit of AD taken off, at least in the very beginning of the game. And I believe it kind of still scales uh, up to where it was last patch to come late game. So there's a little bit less power for early game as Senna. So early game, it's going to just kind of be this range poke fight. Maybe if uh, if Draken is able to find a good pick on the Smolder or the Milio that could spell disaster. Uh, for coffee, uh, for coffee house, but I'd be interested to see where that goes. Well, predictions are live. You've got about five minutes to put your bets on. Uh, let us know what you think of these comps. Uh, last game, I feel like we saw two comps that wanted to do very similar things. This time, I feel like we see a little bit different. I think we see more of, you know, coffee house wants to go in. I think beer and snacks maybe want to let things come into them. I think. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, Zergy, all in on BNS. It's a sure thing. That is, I, that I is can't wait to see it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, since we do have five minutes, do we want to continue the tier list or do we want to look at these skins? Um, we can we can go back and do a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of ranking out of the rest of the the coffees. Um, let me switch us over here also chat uh please feel free to let us know what is your favorite coffee um also we have coffee house coming in uh in this game so we've got their favorites which we'll which we'll show you but we want to know your favorites too so if you have any favorite coffees please let us know uh so going over to back to this coffee list here um let me pull it up on my end i believe i left off with the irish which does have alcohol so after that game 
maybe you know we also have beers and snacks coming in so i think i'm gonna move the irish up to a tier um with that we have we have five more so i'll go through these kind of quicker than last time um wait i do see i'm games are going for the americano but coffee house is going to win easy so you know what with that i'll move americano up i'll move a americano i've now seen someone that likes it so it's like gotta be at least a d tier now uh, maybe I'll, i can be convinced to move it up i also see stopwatch with the mocha I believe I've had the mocha B tier. I can be convinced it's an A tier. I do think it's a really good drink. Uh, continuing with the rest of the list, we've got pumpkin spice. I love pumpkin spice, but it's only good for like one season. So it, it goes down to C, just to counteract the fact that it's not good for like six months, seven months of the year. Um, pistachio on the other hand is seasonal as well, but I think pistachio holds up stronger simply because you know when you're not having a pistachio coffee like if you're just having regular pistachios you can have them anytime of the year so i think i've got to move them up i do see your message there with the frap with the frap wear and we've got a lovely frap coming in we've got the large i'll, I'll even make it a little bigger the large caramel frappuccino with goth girl spit this now this a, is going to be a, this is a coffee house drink it is important to note that we did ask the uh, the experts on coffee, what were your favorite drinks? And they provided us two answers. So so somebody on Coffee House is a fan of this beverage. And I mean, listen, it's it's special, it's unique. I mean, you're you're not gonna see everyone everyone you know asking for it, but the people that do know what they want. So I think it's gotta be up there in A tier. Um, and with that, there is another one, which is this vanilla sweet cream cold brew extra sweet cream. Now. I don't know about you guys, but I think the more words you add to a drink, the better it's going to be. It clearly. So the only thing is that the barista might hate you because they're like, in what order? What? What? How much sweet cream? How much? Like, it's extra sweet cream on top of sweet cream. I guess I just add all of the sweet cream. So they might hate you for it, but it's still a fantastic drink. We're going to move that in a year as well. And last but not least, the, the bread and butter... I want my coffee light and sweet. You go to anywhere in the world and you say, I want it light and sweet. You know they're going to add one, two spoons of sugar. They're going to add maybe like two seconds port of, of, of some like 2% milk or something. It's it's not too sweet where you're going to lose a tooth from it. It's just sweet enough and it's just light enough where it's like a nice chill drink that you can work for. You can work while you drink it. You can drive. You can do whatever. It's not going to... Puts through brain freeze with a frozen drink. It's not going to burn your tongue. It's just a nice chill drink. So that's where I'm going to round this off. If you guys have any, you know, we need to move this. We need to move this. I see S tier wear. Uh, I can I can just rename these, you know, on the list. I, I We don't really have anything in F tier just because who puts coffees in F tier? Um, but I believe that will be in. I believe we will be loading into the game. Yep, should be loading the game here right about now. Gonna go ahead and swap our overlay, making sure that we uh, we fill out the coriander for coffee house. Gonna switch this over so that it is uh, zero to one in their favor, and then we should be loaded into the client by that point. Switch yeah. Up and we. While you do that, I will point out these skins. We got Project Mordekaiser against Project Renekton. Which of the projects is better? We're here to find out. Uh, we do have this Dragon Slayer Jarvan for it as well. Um, not sure who the dragon, the dragon slayer going against the smolder. There, there you have it. Um, well, really with the, it's not, it's the Jarvan, so it's with the smolder. Interesting. I wonder if smolder's gonna have an issue with that. Um, I wasn't able to see the rest of the skins, although I'm sure there's a way for me to find it out. Um, but that will bring us into the game. Uh, I will stop at 25. You let me know when you reach oh. there. Uh. I will, I will pause, or we are at 28, 29, 30. I don't know if you're able to fast forward a bit. I can, I can. Uh, let me know Keep going. Do next time. We're at 36, 37. Perfect, perfect. All right, perfect timing here. Uh, we don't have the count. I believe he's still in Sammy Two Slap's basement. We uh, we do the best with what we got, though. A uh, bit of a stack here topside, and again, looks like we're just going to be seeing a, <laughs> a bit of a, you know, defensive posturing game. Let's see. This also, is while we look, donuts enjoy your list for yeah. real. For real, would you like to? <laughs> so again, th it's important to note that while this is the official coffee uh, tier list of the low budget LCS, I do not co-sign on this. As I am not a coffee enthusiast, these views 
do reflect full metal though. These, so these while we views... slow down here, you gotta take the uh, you gotta defend your honor. Listen, this comes from someone who's been drinking coffee the last six years, seven years now. I started off black with some original Greece, like Athens Greece coffee. It was where I had my first coffee. And I was immediately introduced to the idea of sugar. Um, I've cut sugar out of my life entirely besides coffee. So coffee's my only intake of sugar. So that probably says something. Um, <laughs> But otherwise, I just think a little bit of flavor goes a long way. Interesting tech up here top, I think. Yes, the, the Renekton actually did start to slice and dice. Uh, just looking to get those quick trades, come out, uh, try and you know, not stick around the Mordekaiser. Um, certainly interesting tech here. I imagine that this bot lane should have some early threat, you know, in terms of pushing power if you are beer and snacks. Maybe that leads to some early dragons. Maybe that leads to uh, some type of kill threat on the smolder, on the melio. And we see opposite starts this time for the junglers. Yeah, I'm. I've got my eyes on this mid lane. I see blue card hype. Look at all this damage getting done onto band camp. Curious to see, you know, is this Briar gonna look mid early to try and shut down this Oriana early? Because Oriana, especially with the summonary, has a lot of early game damage coming through. We saw this last game, just blue card hype is, seems like such an aggressive laner. They're not afraid to make pressure plays. They're actually going to do a lot of damage here. Bandcamp going to have to be super careful. Luckily, Oriana was still level 2. Didn't quite have the speed up to get there in time to really pressure that, but but you got to be super careful here. The flash in, oh. and that is first blood over to blue card hype, just as I was trying to say this. Very aggressive laner, looking to put the, the pressure on. Pedal to the metal, and that's a, a solo kill first blood. Yeah, I mean, blue card hype, you know, had such a great game last game. It's just running off of all that dopamine, just saying, hey, listen, like, I'm feeling good. Put me on this Oriana that they banned last game. I want to make things happen. And make things happen is what blue card hype is doing so far. Um, it is interesting. We do have Poba looking from an in, in lane gank here. Just Actually, hit the knockout. The W, the kill just like that. Sneaking through the vision. Uh, secret agent Popoba. Got in the right spot, hit the EQ, and that's a kill over to this Renekton. Early 2 nothing here for Coffee House. Yeah, Coffee House just saying, listen, we, we we had a strong early game. We know this Briar's gonna look for some stuff early. It's good, you know, we wanna counteract this. If we have the ability to, to for blue card hype to, to go off, let's do it. I'm you know, Popoba going up top to get the Renekton ahead. They just wanna get these soul lanes, you know, as much resources as they can. Because Smolder Milio, like, yeah, you can probably, you know, go down there, but they don't really have any way to help you, you know, unless Milio starts her off with a Q and Smolder going in with a W, like, it's 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 not guaranteed, it's not as much of a guaranteed kill as, you know, ganking with the Renekton, ganking with the Oriana is going to be. Yes, yeah, so good, oh, good hook. Good hook. And looking to get the play, and they're actually going to hit it. The center root is going to hit. This going to be a lot of damage on a triple net. They're going to be able to pop the uh, the cozy campfire, I think it's called. Uh, heal back up. But this pressure, you definitely, when you pick something like a Renekton, you take it with the jar, and it's our chunk of going to get a nice little trade here before slicing their way out. You have to look to make early plays in the jar, and you have to have the Renekton in a good spot. Because otherwise, you know, it, you may have been better off picking something else. Good trade here, though, from. Naive? Naive? Uh, Dark Token is actually go back in. The sun's going to hit, but he's going to have to get out of oh. there. That trade did not go the way that uh, Renekton was hoping for. And Isaro on this dragon really early on, just as soon as it spawns. Yeah, but Popa looking up, uh, Navex, or Naves, does have vision of it. And I and I believe Popa realized that, so he's opting to, instead of trying to fight this Mordekaiser, just say, hey, listen, I'm just going to go for, this, uh, for these uh, little Voidlings. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna look to do another trade like we did the game one, where you know we have Coffee House going for the Void Grubs, and then we have Beer and Snacks going for the Dragon. This time, however, it's not just a I believe it was a a, a, a Wind Drake. Now it's an Infernal. So now this is going to give Beer and Snacks a little bit more damage, a little more oomph in the early game. Yeah, we saw last game how uh, Blue Card Hype was able to use those three drops, get the plates on their own, really without the Jarvan uh, interfering too much. This game, they get three drops again. They've got the pressure on to ban camp early. Will they be able to push that same type of advantage? We see Jarvan actually with a uh, cheeky engage top side. Uh, all injured from Dark Choker Mage. There's no R on the Mordekaiser. Good 
be there saves themselves but Popoba is in the vicinity they have flash do they look to go in on this Mordekaiser they decide against it they don't know where the Briar is yeah the Briar was right there too so if they had chosen to look any further that could have spilled disaster you know with the Briar coming in with the Vigar now in lane able to walk over as well I mean it, it hurts Navex to have to back there and have to give so much you know of this of this pressure to Renekton you know, able to get a able to get a, you know played off the chart able Uriarch to get that next wave hit. jarvin is looking eq trying to flash it they got the damage off bandcamp gonna try and survive but that's gonna be a kill over to popoba no flash on the vigar three and a nothing goes the count yeah i mean oriana just has so much pressure to be able to just be like listen i can i can keep poking you to low and then i can speed up my jungle and make it almost impossible for you to get away so unless you have cage there which you know sadly bank camp did not have it at that moment you know it's gonna spell disaster so it will be interesting i believe this is i don't think this is gonna be another play it gets a little close but i think vigar gets back just in time to push uh blue card hype off of this turret blue card hype choosing to stay saying listen you might be able to push me but i think i have enough minions just to stay take a tower shot and still get that played off you know who blue card hype is reminding me of and and anyone who's you know a fan of competitive league uh should smirk when they see this but but i'm seeing shades of jizuke i i feel like blue card hype is winning the lane for themselves you know they they don't need their jungler you know if the jungler shows up it's great as the is going to show up here in the boss side actually cataclysm on the center flash away from center flash away from thresh and they're just gonna be able to walk this out a flash for two flashes for an r great trade there for coffee house um but yeah i dark or blue card hype just uh they are putting so much pressure in the mid lane they're getting these plates getting the solo kill early just uh to me it reminded me of the uh, the italian stallion from uh, evil geniuses a few years back yeah. should have won mvp that one season <laughs> uh just looking at a uh, at chat here keito need this to go to game three so i can okay. actually getting hit by the oriana shockwave lots of damage come through flashes out and they're just gonna have to run back to base. They do have teleport. This Oriana is putting so much pressure onto this Vigar. It's getting difficult to get those stacks. Yeah, I mean, Vigar listen, you. Out. Guard choker mates, do they? They felt like maybe they had the damage to maybe all in them there. They're waiting for their CDs to come back up. Mord has R this. This is a really dangerous look. And that's actually gonna be the, uh, the Realm of Death coming through. Renekton have to flash away. They're taking the tower shot. They're taking so much damage. That's actually gonna be a kill for the Mordekaiser top. Huge pickup there, good Realm of Death under the tower. Yeah, I mean, they they had to fight back, you know, Navex having a good call, saying this Renekton is way too close. You know, forces the all in, forces the ult, you know, in a beautiful position too, where no one's really able to, to go in. Looks like Popopo will try and get this, despite Vigar, you know, Bank Camp is looking with the cage, but this could spell disaster. The Oriana is there as well, but the Thresh ran right behind her. Blue card hype might have to be careful here, might be forced to flash. Ooh, Ooh. Massive play there from Popova tries to buy Blue Card Hype as much time as possible, but the R is gonna hit, and Mordekaiser is there. There's nowhere to go. Mordekaiser comes and scoops up the kill. Two to one goes this Mord top. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, Popova trying their best to say, I will, I will tank this as much as I can, but you can't, you can't stop the Briar roll. You can't stop the Mordekaiser from coming in. Dark Choco looking like they could be caught here. Stun. They're gonna try and run this one out. They're taking a lot of damage though from Isro, and that pull not gonna oh. quite hit. Thresh is going to look for the hook, I would have to imagine. Senna are going to come through do a lot of damage. And look at that oh, hook! Close, was it it? He takes it! He's taking so much damage. Look at that massive shockwave. Dark Choco Mage going to get out with their life. And Popo was here with a massive cataclysm. Double kill over to Blue Card Hype. Mordekaiser is so low. That's going to be a triple kill over to this Oriana. What a hook, but what an answer with that teleport from the Oriana. The, the hook was so good, but what did it cost? It cost and so much gold over to this Oriana. Thankfully not with a ring this time, but still a lot of gold over to the side. And I know we haven't really seen it that much, but I mean, this smolder is getting a lot of gold and a lot of stacks off. I believe we're at what now? We're at 54. I mean, it's nothing to reckon with now, but having 54 now means what? A, a hundred plus going into 20 minutes. Maybe even further, this could be another game where Smolder, where we see a Smolder. He's trying to interrupt uh, Popova here, and Popova's actually getting super low, but the massive stun there. Flash in, trying to kill Popova, but it does not matter. Dark Choke Mage going to pick up the kill, and Oriana is feeling pretty good in this 2v1 here. 1v2 flash over, actually, and they're just going to try and just kill this Thresh straight up. Assist comes over to Popova, trying to grab all those grubs. 
Carpet are probably going to let you EQ their way out. Look at Carpet on the back flank. side here, though. They don't have the Shockwave up quite yet, but they've got a lot of damage. They got they've a got a lot of damage. potential. No Vigar cage up at the moment. The R from Vigar going to try and hit. Not going to kill the Renekton. He's trying to do as much damage as they can. But Oriana picks up the kill. The Dark Chocolate Mage gets the stun off. EQ comes through. The Flash doesn't quite hit the EQ, but it does not matter. That is a kill. 2 to 10 goes the count. 6k gold lead already here for Coffee House. Proven that they are a threat here in Executive. Yeah, and I mean, blue card hype just choosing, you know, yeah, the Vigar was there and a free kill. And blue card hype was like, I don't, I don't, I don't need to worry about you. I worried about getting this, getting this Mordekaiser and getting this kill. Cause I, I know the, my, you know, I got Popoba there. They'll, they'll handle you. And just walk straight past the Vigar for that kill. Beautiful, like a map where and a beautiful where it's also fight. Close the tower. Set out trying to do as much damage as they can, but Mom does fly over the top. Emilio getting low. Health bars getting low across the board. And look at the full range. Oh. R from Briar not quite going to hit. Dragon now in a bit of trouble. The play going to come through. Smolder just pumping there. And the oh, the Q. It's not going to do enough. That is going to be a kill over Blue Card Hype with a shockwave and just a 1v1 on the tower. Look at the all the TP coming in from Renek and Israel trying to do as much damage as they can on the Blue Card Hype. But the W going to come through. And that is another double kill. Already 8 and 1. Oriana, Blue Card Hype is a monster and just look at these plates look there's three top three mid four five have been taken and just so much gold coming off these towers yeah they're just they it's you know yeah you have this smolder which is surprising to see that this molder lane has taken the most off i think it's just because of the amount of pressure they can just provide with just you know the smolder just being able to get the w's off get the get the you know ranged autos off with the with the milio w I mean, huge stuff for, you know, yeah, they're not fighting a lot, but they're getting a lot for done. Bandcamp, Oriana wanted to get that tower. They didn't care that they had no minions, and that is a 700 gold shutdown, I believe, over to Bandcamp. A lot of stuff was popping there. 1,000 gold over to this Vigar. Jeez. I mean, listen, if you're going to die, it's before you buy the ring. Now that you're dead, and now that you, you got that out of your system, you're seeing blue card hype by this way. This tower, the Mordar, Realm of Death actually going to pop up as Isra is coming up here. Renekin is doing just fine in this matchup. They're sustaining as much as they can, but the Vigar Cage is going to trap him. Isra is oh, so heal. low. That is a kill in a 1v3. Does Dark Truck Mage oh. have anything left in the tank? The R coming to come through from the Senna. But look at this healing coming through from the Renekton. The kill goes over to Mordekaiser in the end. Ooh. But that was a 1v4, essentially, and they're still able to pick up one. That was huge healing, especially considering that Renekton it's only the Eclipse. So only the Eclipse that's really helping and granting you that shield. So that's just pure, you know, that's that's uh, the enhanced Q coming through to keep them alive just for that long. Uh, tremendous plays that is two deaths for two turrets and a kill. It looks like he's going for the side of Coffee House here. They have a lot of pressure for this dragon here. You know, just just able to just control this boss at the map. We do see Rift up. I'd be curious to see if Coffee House wants to go for that. Or it's just like, you know, we're just going to control their jungle and just you know try and do as much as we can in this mid uh mid bot here the, we do see popoba walking up towards it so it looks like we will see a rift play the mighty fool not known for his quotes but has a very good one right here the card giveth and then he giveth the other way in regards to that kill under tower vigar gonna pop the cage doesn't quite stop the orianas there's not much that you can do here as the vigar prior is coming down but just this oriana has the lead companion they've got two uh, needlessly large rods on hand, and that's just going to be another solo kill. Uh, and then to answer, uh, yeah, Echo Hype or Hot's question, uh, this is Executive League, so this is this is the league that can have kind of the most uh, rank discrepancy. Uh, there can be up to master ish elo players, um, and then there's a lot of uh, you're kind of in like the emerald to diamond range with you know, maybe a couple of like gold plats tripled in as well. Uh, pretty widespread here. Uh, TP coming in on this backside here. This looks like it's going to be the Oriana pressuring here. Dark Trouble made trying to pressure on here. Cataclysm comes through from the Jarvan. Mordecai gets low. Kill back over to Renekton, and they're keeping the, the throttle on here in this mid lane. Yeah, huge plays for them just to be aware, you know, looking for them, looking for these plays in their jungle. You know, they have the rifts coming in here. Who's going to drive it? We see the Milio drive it. It will be Vapova on the Jarvan driving it. Does take that turret. We can see another drive come through here. It looks like Vapova will opt to go back into Shelly. Maybe for another charge, it looks like it will go through. It will be a lot of damage on that turret. I love seeing that Vapova knows how to drive the Rift Herald. I've had too many incidents in my day where... Uh... 
where someone picks up the rift and doesn't quite know how to drive it. Ooh, Senna has to flash away from this Orianna. Has the death cap in hand already, but that's actually a massive hook that is good. Fire are going to miss. Senna are going to do as much damage as he can. Mordekaiser's looking, but they are getting low. This pressure from the Ori is so strong, and Renekton is just foot pushing top. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, you know, <laughs> for better or worse, it is only two stars of the Dark Seal, but that is a, a Ravidon's death cap. But on that back, it's going to be a little more damage. They have Sword Shield on it, so this Orianna does hurt. Uh, and there doesn't seem to be any MR on the side of uh, Beer and Snacks. You know, we do have a little bit with the Null Magic Mantle. Um, so a little bit on the Thresh. But right now, nothing else to stop this Orianna from just shredding you guys through. So it's going to be tough for, for Beer and Snacks. They got to try and keep this Orianna as far range as possible. You know, as the game goes on, you will have this Senna gaining more and more range. So that might be your way of trying to like keep them away from you. But on the same side, you gotta deal with the Smolder, who's up to, I believe, we're up to 127 sacks. So that will be, I believe, the Achoo, uh, which comes in. So, but we still wait. We still have to wait for the Super Scorcher Breath coming in at 225. But at least now the explode, the uh, Qs from Smolder will do more damage and will be a little bit of an AoE effect. Yeah, we see Coffee House prepping this dragon they are kind of in the driver's seat right now you know they they've got the pressure they've got this ori they've got this this 400 shutdown uh smolder kind of flying under the radar um very uh strong here they've got the pressure on dragon uh this jungle is kind of just theirs to take and we'll see a lot of contests here people going for the fight over the raptors 5v5 uh dragon is starting up here but blue card hype is hiding there just Oh, the away. damage. Mass, like, look at these cues. Listen, that Navex is like, why did I get an EMR? Because, I mean, like, the, the healing really hurts on the top side against Renekton and Jarvan. But the second this Orianna comes into play, you're you're wondering why you didn't change your decisions. Look at that damage. Mordekaiser forced to get out of this fight after, what, two, three Orianna cues? Yeah, it's just going to be head for the hills. Dragon going over to Coffee House. It's going to be their second. Oh, Fate um, looking on to Senna. Fate is looking in on the Senna. They are by themselves. Briar actually going to flash in, but good flash there to match by the Mortar are coming through, and Renekton is on this backside. That is going to be the Senna down. That's going to be the Briar down. And they're going to push onto this inhibitor here. Uh, as meanwhile, blue card hype and Popova pushing on this bot tier two. 3v3 mid lane, Dark Trouble Mage gonna flash over the Vanguard Kings, does not care. Popova flashes over Cataclysm, but the massive Thresh Lantern gets Fan Camp out of dodge. Inhibitor is gonna go down ultimately. Tier two bot should be going down here shortly from the Orianna. But I, yeah, I but I mean the, the, the save, the save from the from the Thresh, I mean keeps them alive in this game because with all that taken down. Coffee House is gonna be a little tough them to go for an end here. They can pressure for this bot side, but unless they get a tremendous pick with with all those ults down, it may be a little tough them to end this game here. Massive shockwave there, just oh. essentially 100 to zero. Isero, 4v5. The, the death timers are very quick, but they got the two inhibits down. Do they look for anything else here? Massive hook actually from the threat. Gets Vigar into the cage. Renekton taking as much damage as they can, but the realm of death. Mordekaiser versus Renekton. Renekton actually going to get a low flash oh, in there. Oh, he's going to come Mordekaiser. out in the middle That's of them. That's going to be a 300 point shutdown over the night. 45. Briar is coming up. They have the R. Is this the look? Do they look to fight while they've got them the man advantage, or do they look to just try and collect this gold? I mean, for now, they, they I mean, they've got to stop these pushing waves. You do have this Vigar. You do have this Santa that can clear the waves um, and can stack from them as well. Uh, so right now they're just trying to buy time as much as they can, get as many souls, get Vigar as many sacks as you can, and hope you can kind of just slow down these fights a little bit. You know, get whoever's getting picked off out with the Thresh Lanterns. Um, sadly, this will more than likely be a Baron take from Coffee House. It does look like Popoba is looking for a back here, potentially to finish off that item with the pickaxe, and it looks like it will be a Spear of Sojourn. So a lot more health coming through. Um, could be an angle for someone on the side of beer, uh, beer and snacks to look for some some health takedown because I mean you have so much health on, on the Jarvis. You know you even have the the smolder on three on the spear soldier for the health. So a lot of health coming in on the side of Coffee House saying, listen, we want to make our people as tanky as possible because we've got Smolder to come in with the true damage once they get their stacks. We have this Ar uh, Oriana coming in with right now the four stacks of the Dark Seal to do this damage. And that's plenty of damage to take down the Baron here. Um, it is a territorial Baron, um, you know, with a little wall there. Oh no, I believe it's the... 
I'm sorry, I believe it's the other Baron with this one. Uh, but they will take down the Baron Asher nonetheless, and they're gonna use this to push in the top lane. Yep, they've already got the uh, the mid bottom hips open. Uh, just good macro here, I think. You've, you've got the strength, you know, five v five. You're you're probably gonna win a lot of the fights that are looking in that scenario. Uh, Gronk, they can't decide who's gonna get it. Popova gonna come back and steal it. And uh, yeah, we're in a five man top. And uh, if you are coffee house, probably look to end the game right here. Good hook there from Drake. Actually gonna hit Popova. Uh, but the pressure is on. Look at this damage. Popova going to go in with the EQ. Just going to take the tower. And they're going to keep the pressure on this inhib. Triple inhibs now. Crashing into this base on the next, uh, on the next wave. Massive damage from Fate. And this is your last defense if you are being stacks. They've got to hold off. This is a Baron wave. This is the triple threat. Bandcamp Orion is going to flash Vigar. over the Vigar cage. And flash matched by Bandcamp. But that's one tower gone. Massive Oriana are going to take out Bandcamp right away. And the Realm of Death coming through from the Mordecai. So he's just looking at Oriana. But he's actually losing this 1v1. Actually, a lot of damage. Dark Chocobo Mage gets hit by the, the, uh, the Fire. Izero is able to pick up Renekton on the backside. That's two people down for uh, Beer and Snacks. But look at the Pope. Massive Cataclysm on the two people. Thresh flashes out. But the minions and blue card height end the game. Two with nothing is our series here in favor of Coffee House. I mean, just I've got to give to Blue Card Hype. Just knew the amount of power they had early game. Was not afraid to use it. Was not afraid to look inside the jungles for for these for these plays. Um, I mean, beautiful stuff from the rest of the team as well. Um, you know, Dark Coco Mage able to you know against the bad matchup against the Mordekaiser are still able to hold off on their own. Popoba able to make so many plays. Having a 12.0 KDA on this game. Uh, beautiful stuff from the side of Coffee House. Still an incredible series. Uh, said it was a little short, but still beautiful stuff seeing from the side um, of, of Beers and Snacks. Uh, I love to see the, the Briar, you know, two games. Yes, you know, didn't go your way, but still love to see, like, you're confident, you want to make stuff happen in early game. Um, and, you know, Draken with these beautiful plays. Uh, trying to, you know, help your fig fig help out in the early game. Sadly, it, you know, it was a little slow lane, couldn't really do much. Um, and the stacking just wasn't in time. But so a beautiful series from both these teams. Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, Coffee House looking strong today. Blue card hype looking like a massive player here in executive. I believe that that brings Coffee House to, I want to say, 3-0 and o on the season so far. Uh, if if anyone from from Coffee House is, is hanging out in Twitch chat and someone is interested in maybe coming on and uh, talking a little bit about your Series W, um, I'm sure we could fit in a little interview here, ask a couple questions. Um, we'll give them give them a minute or two to see if anyone's interested in that. But but yeah, very very strong showing I think from Coffee House. A uh, couple of big matchups here down down the road, though. In Group A, you've got the Naughty Boys. That's a rivalry that's been going many seasons in Executive. Uh, both teams are currently undefeated. I believe Naughty Boys are actually playing their series at the same time. And then Lost Cause, reigning champions of Executive. Uh, that series is going to have to happen sometime down the road. Looks like uh, Week 6, actually, is when uh, those two teams are going to face off. Yeah, executive uh, looking strong here, especially Group A. A lot of good teams. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see where the rest of the series, you know, rest of the season goes. Um, you know, are other teams able to to try and stop this, you know, blue card madness coming in, uh, and you know, stop these these plays uh, around the map? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. You know, what's the strategy? How do we how do we take this down? Is this you know is this mid lane prio? really all that much or is it going to be an instance of you know of almost uh what team was it i think it was eg with jojo pune you know where jojo pune's doing all this damage and the second you start focusing him you're able to shut them down early does the team fall apart it'll be interesting to see uh but i'd love to see you know more games coming out from these teams and hopefully we have you know exciting series coming further in the series in the uh, season yeah absolutely Massive series here today for Coffee House. A um, lot of good performances. Uh, I think everyone had their moments where they were uh, popping off. I mean, especially, you know, like the, the Shen into the Cassante. Uh, a couple solo kills top. Um, I think that's pretty much going to wrap us up for today. Uh, I believe we've got plans for maybe uh, some streams this weekend. Uh, still still, uh, still simmering. Uh, we're we're going to take a look at the schedule, see what games are popping up. Um, that is going to do it for me. I am Less Force, uh, Full Metal. You, you got slander for your coffee takes uh, as a Dunkin' Donuts enjoyer uh, on paper. Uh, is there any parting words you want to give to the uh, Twitch chat tonight? 
Uh, listen, uh, stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, make sure to drink water along with your coffee every once in a while. Only.